Good day, and welcome to Orientation for Independence University New Students. Now, during this presentation, we will be giving you four quiz questions and the answers to those questions, and this is how we take attendance. So, when you reach each question slide, go ahead and pause the video to write down the question and the correct answer before moving on with the orientation. Then, after you've completed this orientation, you will email your questions and answers to saslc at independence.edu, and that's how you'll receive credit for your attendance. Thank you, and enjoy the presentation. So welcome to Independence University. Um, your student advisor is one of the great resources that we'll have available to you as a new student. My name is Mia, and I'm actually a student advisor here as well. So your student advisor will be contacting you on your second or third day of class, and your student advisor is someone who can help answer any questions that you have regarding logging in, completing homework, or anything else having to do with your whole first month of school. So you can contact your student advisor, or SA as we call them, via text, email, phone call, anything like that during normal business hours. Now, Please note that your student advisor is usually not going to be here on the weekends and they're not going to be here late at night. We do have lives outside of work. So at those times, we have many other resources available to you to help make sure that you're able to always succeed. Now, one of the most important resources is our tutoring center. Our tutoring center can be accessed through Shark, which is our academic resource page. That's going to be found within your online classroom. Or you can also access our tutoring center by calling 801-326-4601. And then for any additional math, English, and writing resources, just talk to your student advisor. Now it's important to set yourself up for success as an online student. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you have reliable access to a computer with the internet. So what this means is to have a plan for where you're going to go each day to work on your schoolwork. Now, this might be as simple as your home internet connection and your personal laptop computer. Um, it's always important to have a backup plan, though. So you can always access the internet at your local public library as well. Um, you can usually access free Wi-Fi at like coffee shops or Starbucks. Um, and it's always good to have a plan of a friend or family member or even a neighbor whose computer you could use if you weren't able to access yours. So make sure that you have a primary plan and a backup plan at all times. It's also important to create a study schedule and stick to it. So you're going to have an average in your first class of about three homework assignments per week. So what you're going to want to do is take a look at those assignments when you first log in Think about how much time you think they're going to take you to complete, and then map out your week on a calendar. Think about all the other things that you have going on in your schedule. Maybe it's obligations with kids or work or anything like that. And make sure you block off time for when you're going to work on each homework assignment so that you can stay organized and on track. Now, to set yourself up for success, you can also set up a designated study space. This can be somewhere in your home or even somewhere outside of your home where your mind knows that it's time to focus on schoolwork. So a desk or a spot at the kitchen table or in your living room or your bedroom are all great places that you can do that. Now also, you can get a study buddy. This can be a friend or a family member who's interested in attending online college as well because it's perfect to go ahead and set yourself up for success by having a support network. Now, if you don't have anyone that you can think of right now who would like to attend school with you, you can also connect with your fellow students through our online classroom or even through our Facebook page. So call, text, or email your student advisor with any questions at any time to make sure that you don't fall behind in your class. It's important to know that our college wants to make sure that you're doing everything you possibly can to be successful, and so we will heavily monitor the first class we want to make sure that you're showing up to class and turning in all of your homework on time. So if you receive three strikes cumulatively throughout the class, you may be removed. Now, the way that you earn strikes to earn up to those three that would result in the removal from class 
would be to turn in an assignment late or missing an assignment and not turning in it at all. And if you're not showing activity by doing the minimum amount of daily checkpoints as required each week, this could turn into strikes as well. So the daily checkpoints are what count for your attendance. And then remember, you're going to have that average of about three homework assignments per week. Always remember that even if it's not perfect, it's better to turn it in than to turn nothing in at all. So if you need help, you can contact your student advisor and our tutoring lab and they can work with you on your homework assignments. Also, last but not least, if you do fail or withdraw from a class later on in your program after this first one, um, you will need to retake it and you would be charged for that extra class. So make sure you always stay on top of your schoolwork. And just know that the strikes policy does only occur in our first class, so your first month of school, and that those strikes do roll over from week to week. So if you get two strikes during your first week of class and another two during your second week of class, that could, remove, that could result in being removed from the class. Now, we've come to our first quiz question. The first quiz question is how many days per week do you need to log into class? So if you remember here, we need to complete four daily checkpoints required each week. So of course what that means is that you have seven days in the week. You could do up to seven, but four is the minimum. So go ahead and pause the slideshow to write down this question and the answer. Now, it's important to also honor your three commitments as an online student. Those commitments are to attend class and participate steadily in your classes, to do your best and put forth a strong academic effort, and to meet your financial commitment. So honor your financial responsibility, whatever that is that you've set up with your personal financial planner. And if you ever find it challenging to meet any of those commitments, just let us know and we'll be happy to assist you. So remember, communication is key. Now some of our online student expectations that we've covered briefly are that you are expected to log in at least four days per week and the way that your login is counted is by completing your daily checkpoint question which is found underneath all the week's worth of homework down at the bottom by clicking on daily checkpoints and that gives you actually five points towards your grade every day so if you complete the seven rather than the four that's actually going to give you 15 points extra credit every single week so think of it as a free insurance policy for your grade now another expectation is to turn your homework in on time and done properly. And once again, that's going to be usually about three assignments per week. So if you can get your lecture done on Monday, then your first assignment Tuesday, your second assignment Wednesday, and your third assignment Thursday, you're going to be free to enjoy the long weekend with Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you also need to post all of your assignments and your schoolwork by Saturday at midnight Mountain Standard Time of the week. So this is the due date for your homework. It's due by Saturday night at the very latest. But it is important to try and get it done before the end of normal business hours on Friday because that's when the tutoring lab and your student advisors are going to be the most available to help you in case any issues come up. Also know that once you've turned everything in, all of your grades should be posted by the instructor by Wednesday of the following week. Now, we've reached quiz question number two. What is the name of the quiz question that you must complete each day to receive credit for logging in? So just a hint, it starts with daily and ends with perfect. So go ahead and pause the video once again write down this question and the answer and then press play to move on. Now your virtual classroom is called Learning Studio. Learning Studio can be found by visiting online.learn.stephenpinniger.edu. It'll also be sent to you in an email with your login and password right before school starts. So Learning Studio is a program that we use to run your classroom. It's the website where you're going to go on the internet to attend class. And with this website, any web browser can be used. So Internet Explorer, or Safari, or Firefox, or even Google Chrome, any of the others can be used. But we have found that the web browser that works the best is Mozilla Firefox. 
Now, if you're ever having any issues with this website, you can contact the technical support phone number for Learning Studio at 877-740-2213. When it comes to logging in to Learning Studio, your Learning Studio login will look like this. It's going to be a square box in the middle of the web page. Your login ID or your username will be your first name dot last name. So if your name was Jane Doe, your user ID, all lowercase, would be Jane dot Doe. Now, since this is a common name, chances are there might already be someone in the system named Jane Doe. If that's the case, then your username would be Jane dot Doe and the number one, or maybe even Jane dot Doe and the number two. And then your password is going to be your zip code, so the zip code wherever you live. Now, if any login issues come up or you're having any trouble, please contact your student advisor immediately for assistance. Especially during your first week of school, it's important to log in every single day to make sure that you meet that attendance requirement, as well as having enough time to get your homework completed. So also remember, your login will probably be sent out a few days before class begins, but it will not be active, so you won't be able to log into class until your start date. So your first day of class is the first day that your login will be activated. Now, once you log in, it's going to bring you to this page. It's kind of like walking through the front door of a school, and now you're in the hallway. So we need to locate the classroom and walk inside so that you can get to work. The classroom is found by clicking on CSS 101, Psychology of Motivation, down in the middle of the page. So we'll go ahead and click on there and enter your online classroom. That'll bring you to the home page, where all of the important announcements are found, for important recent information from your instructor as well as the administrators of the course. You can also find your grade book at the top in the red bar, the Dropbox where you're going to turn in most of your homework, the document sharing where your teacher can give you handouts and information, um, as well as the syllabus on the left where you can find all the course information as well as your professor's contact info, virtual classroom where you can find your live lecture, ebook which is your textbook, Smart Thinking, which is a writing resource, and then by clicking on each week, you can find that week's homework, as well as that daily checkpoint question. Now, it's good to check the announcement section as soon as you log in, and then move immediately to your daily checkpoint question so that you don't forget to do one. Now, your live instructor lecture is where your professor will be teaching you about all of the homework that's due that week, as well as the material that's being covered. So it's found by clicking on Virtual Classroom, and you can find out what date and time your lecture is being held, because it's different for each course. So this is a good thing to do when you log into class on the very first day. So the date and time will be different depending on which instructor you have, so make sure you check on it. And attendance is mandatory of the live lecture, which, by the way, happens once a week, every week, on the same date and time. So, since we're an online school and we want everything to be absolutely convenient for you, we do offer a recorded version of the lecture as well. So if you miss the lecture when it happens the first time, or if you just want to recap or you missed some of the information, we will have a recording also available that you can watch an unlimited number of times at your convenience. Now when you click on Virtual Classroom, it'll bring you to a page like this. It'll say Virtual Classroom, Collaborate Classroom, It'll have the day and the time of your lecture, as well as a link for the live session at that date and time, and a link for the recording once that date and time has already passed and your instructor has uploaded the recorded lecture. Now, make sure that you pay attention not only to the day, but also the time, because all of our times posted are in Mountain Standard Time. So if you live in the Eastern Standard Time Zone, you're going to need to always add two hours. So in this example, where it's being held on Monday evening at 8 p.m., if you lived in New York State, for example, you'd need to add two hours. So that would mean it was at 10 p.m. your time. If you live in Central Standard Time, for example, maybe you live in Texas, then you would need to add one hour. So always make sure that you stay aware of your time zone. Um, and if you're ever unsure of it, you can go ahead and look online just by typing in Google current time Mountain Standard Time. 
Now, we've come to quiz question number three. How many strikes does it take to be removed from class? Now, think of it just like baseball. So there's a hint. Now go ahead and pause the slideshow, write down the question and the answer, and then we'll move on. Now, you're going to have four main types of homework. First are the daily checkpoints. You need to complete one every single day. Second, the discussion board postings. One of these is due on Wednesday, by the way. We'll talk about that in a moment. And this is where you take an assigned topic and you discuss it with your fellow students. We'll talk about it a little more in a moment, but it's a lot like posting on Facebook. The third type of homework are your written papers or projects. And then the fourth type of homework are tests or quizzes, sometimes called assessments. So, posting a discussion response, like I said, one of these is going to be due on Wednesday. So let's talk about the one that you complete during week one. You click on week one to access the week's homework, and then you're going to click on discussion understand self. Now this particular week, you're going to have two different topics to choose, to choose from on what you'd like to write. So when you click on the title of the assignment, it'll open up the instructions in the main page. You're going to go ahead and read through the instructions, choose from option one or option two, and then at the bottom of the instructions, you're going to click on the little green plus sign with the respond link. That's going to take you to a page like this, where it looks kind of similar to writing an email. So what you're going to do is you're going to type your post in the main white box. Then make sure you also have a descriptive title, so your first and last name and the name of the discussion post would be a good one. Type the post. It needs to be a minimum of 150 words and make sure you cover the topic that you've been asked to speak about. Then spell check it. You want to make a good impression on your professor, so use the ABC check mark button. And then once it's complete, you're going to go ahead and click on post response. Now, the requirements for your discussion post is actually that it's a three-part assignment. Now, if you remember, I said it's kind of like writing on Facebook. The way that that is, is you're going to take the original topic and you're going to write your main post of at least 150 words. But then what you're also going to do is choose two posts by your fellow students and you're going to leave a comment on their post of at least 50 words each. So. Pick two students to leave a 50-word comment, and then make sure you do your main post of 150 words by Wednesday at midnight. Then those comments are due by Saturday at midnight with the rest of your homework. The reason for that is we need your main post in so that your fellow students have a chance to leave their comments on it. And then once again, always remember to check your spelling and grammar. Now, the next type of homework is tests and quizzes. So for example, during week one, we have the scavenger hunt. Now with this one, it's all about the prep work. So let's look at the instructions just a little bit. Now, before you begin this scavenger hunt, you're going to actually go to document sharing and download the Word document or the PDF, and we're going to give you the question. So then what you'll do is take the question with you when you watch your lecture, and that's going to help you find the answers to a lot of the questions. So when you find the answers, go ahead and write them down. Then you can find the rest of the answers through our web page in the various resource links under Course Home. And then when it's time to take the scavenger hunt, you have all the questions and answers right in front of you. So some important information to know about all tests and quizzes is you can see what dates the test is available to take. You want to make sure you take it on time, as well as how many times you can take the test. So if you're not happy with your score the first time, you can take the scavenger hunt again. You can see how many times you have left by looking at number of remaining attempts, and then also pay attention to how much time you have to complete the assessment. So for example, the scavenger hunt, you have one hour. So make sure that once you click on begin, don't walk away from your computer. You need to stay and finish the whole exam. So click on begin when you're ready to start the test. Now, the next type of homework is submitting a paper or an essay assignment. So you're going to read through the instructions, follow the instructions to properly write your paper. And once again, that's found by clicking on the week and then the title of the assignment. And when it comes time to turn it in, you're going to save the assignment somewhere that it's easy to find on your computer. So if you're working on a paper in Microsoft Word, 
You might want to have a schoolwork folder found on your desktop where you can save all of your homework. So save the paper, and then you're going to click on Dropbox in the red bar on the very top to begin turning it in. Next, you're going to click on Submit Assignment to proceed with the process. And this is kind of like walking up to your teacher's desk, that's the Dropbox, and then you need to tell her what you're there to do. So you're here to submit an assignment. Next up, she's going to want you to put it in the proper basket so that her desk stays organized. So click on the drop-down menu and pick the title of the assignment that you're turning in. Then you can write a short note in this white box here. Think of it like a post-it note. You can say, Dear Professor, thank you so much for taking time to grade my paper, or here is my homework. Anything like that, just keep it professional and friendly. Now, once you've written a note, you've selected the proper basket, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the paper clip and find your paper on your computer. So click on the paper clip, and that'll open a pop-up window like this. Now this is a very similar process to uploading a photo to Facebook or attaching a photo to an email. So you're going to click on Browse, and then think of it like looking through your backpack. You need to find the folder that you put that paper in. So Browse, find your schoolwork folder on your desktop, select the document, and then you're going to click on Attach File. Now, once that file is successfully attached, you'll see underneath the paperclip icon the name of your paper. Once that's there, go ahead and click on Submit Assignment. Now, we've come to quiz question number four. During your first class, how many homework assignments on average will you have per week? So remember, Lecture Monday, sometimes it's Tuesday, but Lecture Monday, Assignment Tuesday, Assignment Wednesday, Assignment Thursday. So how many homework assignments on average is that? Go ahead and pause the slide and then write down the question and answer. Now some other types of assignments that you'll have during your first class are an ePortfolio where you'll be making your own professional website and you'll need a Gmail account for that but we can help you out when you get to it. Now, you'll also be meeting and speaking with the Associate Dean, who's an expert in your program. So for example, if you're in the Graphic Arts program, this is someone who's worked in that field for years and years. Same goes for Respiratory Therapy or any of our other programs. Now, you'll also be learning how to research using our ProQuest Research Library. This is a useful, useful tool for writing papers on a college level. Your textbook is actually in an ebook form and can be taken with you anywhere. The beautiful thing about this is you have no heavy book to carry. It's always organized. You're not at any risk of spilling your coffee on it or forgetting it at home when you need it. And all you have to do to access it is have a computer with the internet. So underneath Course Home on the left, you're going to click on ebooks, and that'll show you the cover as well as a link for each individual chapter. If you click on a chapter, It'll take you to a page that looks just like a normal textbook, but it's on your computer. So you'll have pictures, chapter headings, and content. Some neat functions of this, however, are that you can actually save individual chapters to your computer or even to your Kindle or your smartphone so that you can read them later when you don't have access to the Internet. For example, maybe you have a long train ride to get to work. Also, you can zoom out or zoom in to adjust the text to your eyes. You can even print certain pages if you'd like to. Another great resource we have is called Smart Thinking. Smart Thinking is a resource that we pay for and provide as a school that can help you with your writing and making sure that your papers meet the proper formatting. Now you can submit any essays you want to Smart Thinking for constructive feedback and they'll help make your paper better. In fact, we want to make sure that you know how to use this valuable resource so you will be required to use it for an assignment during week three of your first class. Important thing to know about Smart Thinking is that it takes 48 hours to receive feedback, so you do need to plan ahead. Think of it this way. The paper is due on Saturday night, but it's going to take two days to get it back from Smart Thinking, and then you need time to make those changes before you submit your final draft. So you need to make sure that that paper is complete on Tuesday or Wednesday and uploaded to Smart Thinking. Now, when you click on Smart Thinking, it's going to bring you to a page like this. 
and the most important thing to look at is the writing center. That's where you're going to upload your essay. It's front and center. Now, another great resource is Shark. Shark is a page that has a lot of our resources available. It has a recap of student orientation. This is where the early admissions course is found. This is even where our tutoring center can be found, as well as lots of other great resources of our page. Our early admissions course can be accessed once you're officially enrolled. So now that you've completed this orientation, as soon as you send your questions and answers in an email, then you'll be signed up for the early admissions course. The early admissions course is an opportunity for you to earn coins for school gear by completing small assignments, which are all prep work for your first class. Now some of these assignments are actually transferable to your first course for credit and your student advisor will send you the link in a follow-up email. So once again, make sure that you save all of the assignments you complete so that you can transfer them to your first course, the ones that are applicable. Now who's excited for laptops? I bet you all are. Laptops will be issued once you have finished all of your paperwork with your financial planner, including submitting your ID docs and completing your financial aid paperwork. Um, our master's students do not receive a laptop, only our associates and bachelor's degree students do. So everyone in all of our other programs will, however. Now, when you receive your laptop will depend on when all of your paperwork and enrollment process is complete. So if you have any questions about that, just contact your admissions consultant. Now the laptops are considered the property of Independence University until you graduate from your program. What this means is you are responsible to take good care of your laptop. Make sure you keep it safe, and that means physically as well as virtually safe. So don't download anything dangerous or use it to play games that might harm your computer. Make sure you're not clicking on any pop-up ads and so forth. Um, if you have any problems with your laptop, you can contact our IT help desk at 866-888-3768. And depending on which program you're in, the majority of our students receive this top-of-the-line HP laptop, and our graphic arts students instead receive a MacBook. Now, no matter what laptop you receive, it will be preloaded with all the software that you need to complete your degree program. So remember, check the syllabus at the start of your course to make sure that you understand the course requirements as well as have your professor's contact information. You'll have four main types of homework, daily checkpoints, complete a minimum of four per week, discussion posts, make sure you have the first one due by Wednesday, tests or quizzes, read the instructions carefully, and papers. Then log in at least four days per week Turn in all of your homework on time every week, especially during your first course so that you're not removed from school due to our strikes policy, and watch your instructor's lecture once every week, whether that's live or recorded. Then contact your student advisor with any questions that come up. Now, don't forget to email your quiz answers for orientation credit as soon as possible. If you have any questions about this orientation, Please contact your student advisor by emailing faslc at independence.edu. In review, here are all four of the quiz questions. I'll go ahead and leave those up on the screen in case there's any that you didn't have a chance to write down yet. And thank you so much for attending orientation.